This is a permission from Mr. Hal to publish his email. Uh, I'm also copied on it. Uh, this is an email to Mary McBride, our Exeter Township Manager, uh, from February 14, 2023. It's a recent one. And you can see the subject deals with meeting, meetings and the handouts. And Mr. Howe is suggesting that the handout during the meeting become part of the documents provided to the public in the same file as all other documents on the township website in order to have a complete record of all information presented. And I agree with him. Uh, we should collect all the data, all the documents that are discussed in that meeting that are handed out to the supervisors and made available quite often to the public in attendance. Sometimes it is projected in the video, but not, not every time. So uh, the documents could subsequently be added to the file to make it a complete file. And uh, I believe this is a management board correspondence issue. It is not a legal issue. And the reason why I bring this up is because we're gonna talk about the interjection of our solicitor uh, Mr. Schnee into this process of public communications to our manager, uh, which also should be presented to the board, but we haven't been getting any list of any public correspondences whatsoever. So that's something we need to, to work on as well. Here you can see that this is the, uh, the response of Mr. Schnee, who uh, somehow received this email forwarded by Mary McBride, obviously, about the meeting handouts. And uh, Mr. Schnee says, I received a copy of your email and certainly appreciate your interest in your local government. And then he goes on to uh, talk about himself, how he was the assistant chief counsel for the Office of Open Records. And then he references areas that Mr. Howe could go to, to to view this information and, uh, and then closes with the fact that, hey, uh, there's an on-demand presentation I did with a colleague to the Pennsylvania Bar Institute. So the fact that this is a communication that should have never occurred between our solicitor and a person from the public who's asking our management uh, certain questions uh, that, that he shouldn't have ever gotten involved in, but he claims attorney-client privilege. This, is, this is, has nothing to do, it's not a legal matter, it hasn't risen to the position of a legal matter. Uh, I don't know that attorney-client privilege can be claimed in this situation with public correspondence. I'm not even understanding why he's involved in this. Maybe this might explain it. Is it worth noticing that Schnee is therefore inserting himself in the politics and government of the township, directly interfering in the proper deliberations of government and policy between appointed public elected officials? He's effectively acting as a sixth, sixth supervisor, isn't he? This is unethical and it's wrong. Let me show you a recent correspondence from Mr. Schnee to me claiming that this is privileged communication. But if you look, I have notes on the left side for every paragraph he wrote, and it's not a legal issue in any of this. It's a, car, it's a conversation between he and myself. No specific legal issue is raised. And in fact, what I'm concerned about is that there's a desperate attempt to cover up his and his clicks tracks. Schnee is labeling any email communications between supervisors and anyone in the township, including bureaucrats, contractors, and vendors, by inserting himself in the conversations. Basically, copy me on everything in order to circumvent Pennsylvania right to know laws, as these emails are generally considered public record. By striking them with attorney-client privilege, he forces those documents into confidentiality and makes them undiscoverable. However, I am a politician now, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, I am. I'm also an elected township supervisor, and uh, accordingly, I do not view this correspondence as having attorney-client privilege. 
It was in reference to some qu uh, requests for documents. There's nothing, no legal matter related to a document that had already been discussed in public. So I just want to point out here in the last paragraph uh, that Mr. Schnee says that if I think this isn't a legal matter, then he respectfully notes that I should direct my questions to someone other than the township attorney. Otherwise, when you contact the township solicitor, I assume that your inquiry is related to a legal matter involving the township. So basically what he's telling me to do is get lost uh, unless, uh, unless you have a legal matter to discuss with me. I can't ask him for any documents that might exist that I need to look at to do my duties as a township uh, supervisor. I can't ask uh, uh, questions about anything. It's got to be a legal matter. Yet, somehow, Mr. Howe's letter emailed to our township manager about uh, documents that are presented in meetings that are not in the original package uh, got to his desk and he considered this a legal matter. So uh, and, and attaching attorney-client privilege to a public communication. So I, I just want to say in summary that communications received from the public to our township manager should be provided to the supervisors for review are answered by the township manager and that answer provided to the township supervisors. Here, a simple inquiry by the public was shared with the township solicitor, who warned me, as, as I mentioned earlier, if this is a non-legal matter as you position it, I'd respectfully note that you may want to direct your questions to someone other than the township's attorney. So why was Mr. Howe's question directed to our solicitor by Mary McBride, our township manager. It wasn't a legal matter, was it? It was a question and a statement and a suggestion. And Mr. Schnee goes, well, otherwise, you when you contact the township solicitor, I assume that your inquiry is related to a legal matter involving the township. Here, like I said, Mr. Howe was asking a simple question and suggesting how documents might be handled. Questions that should have been answerable by the township manager. Can anyone claim that this inquiry rose to the level of a legal matter? Yet Schnee, or Schnee, I'm sorry, Schnee is attempting to make it so. I also want to talk about the budget for 2023. The budget for general legal counsel for 2023 is $190,000. That's way up uh, from, I think, 2022 was 135000 But the recent billing for January 2023 is over $23,000. This is a $280,000 annual rate. And I received uh, not too long ago a cease and desist letter from Mr. Schnee. And in that, he bragged about the fact that or he claimed that he saved the township all kinds of money uh, with his uh, ability to, to practice law, I guess. But if we go look at the 2022 budget and what was spent for general legal fees, I don't think that will support his claim. But on another note, what is he doing discussing our budget and whether he uh, save this money or not. This is not a legal matter. It is a management issue. He, he's done this in several instances that I'm documenting each time he does interject himself into management. Uh, we have a, I have a list of it, but uh, it's not his concern about what our budget is. It's really not his concern how much money he saved us because legal matters tend to have a life of its own. And if he was really concerned about saving us money, he would have known not to bring that injunction against a public figure like Mr. Galef, who is a, a reporter. Uh, he's in the news. Uh, he has a First Amendment right. 
And of course, Mr. Schnee had to back off on that one. I also want to talk about, just, just mention the Second Class Township Act and Section 1103, which deals with what the supervisor's duties are. And I'm only presenting a very small segment of that. I recommend that you go to Google, Google Second Class Township Code, Pennsylvania, and uh, read a Section 1103 in its entirety. But here you can see the duties of the solicitor. The township solicitor, when directed or requested, okay, did Mary, did, did our township manager request the solicitor to take care of this correspondence? And should he have taken on that duty since it's really not a legal matter? And, and he acted as management in the township. So Section 7, 1103 kind of answers that. When directed or requested. But re directed and requested by who? And this answers it near the end of 1103. Every professional act incident to the office which the township solicitor may be authorized or required to do by the Board of Supervisors. So there is a group that should be directing or requesting him to do such. And I don't believe I have any information where the board has directed him to answer public inquiries. It's the board's duty. And what's happening in our township is we've allowed our solicitor to just run free. There are no constraints on him whatsoever. He can do whatever he pleases to do, pursue whatever matter he wishes to pursue, uh, obfuscate uh, uh, information that I'm trying to, to, to obtain so I can make decisions and discuss information with the public. I am a public figure. I am a politician now, whether I like it or not. And I promise you as much transparency as possible. So, and finally, in closing, I'd like to thank you for listening to my video and uh, listening to my uh, information that I'd like to provide you as transparently as possible and remind you that this is my opinion. As an elected township supervisor, I wanted to share this with my constituents. Thank you very much.